right, here we go. Mo3, welcome to Vlad TV. <laughs> What's up, man? We here. Hey, man, quite a body of work. Quite a body of work. Who's that? Who's that? Uh, how many years now have you been, like, consistently putting out shit now? Three and a half, like four. Okay, it almost seems like it's longer because I've seen some of these videos that are like five years old and such. Oh, it's, it's it might be, it might be where if you talking about like right now, like like right now, right now, I won't say like three and a half, four, like. Yeah. Congrats, man! Appreciate Congrats, it. you got some big songs under your belt. Appreciate you it. You know, and uh, I think in in a world where where mumble rap is kind of running things, I feel like you're actually lyrical and you take a lot of time with your with your verses. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I want you to get the message. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Well, this is your first time here. Yeah, it's my first time. Let's start from the beginning. So, you grew up in Dallas? Yeah. Okay. North Dallas? Yeah, in Afghanistan, man. Far as lane I did. Okay. So, tell me about Dallas growing up. Oh, uh, shit. This is like, it's like every other city in a, in a way. If you're talking about the streets and the struggle. You know, shit, it's a hood everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's a struggle everywhere. You know what I'm saying? It's a neighborhood where it's violence and crime everywhere. So, you know, shit, growing up, you know, I had fun, got in trouble. Good days, it was bad days. So, you know. Okay. So, you talked about before growing up with your mom. Uh, was your dad around also? Yeah, he he was around, but they weren't together. But they were separate. But I always had my daddy. He, 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 he was a real nigga, you know. A lot of niggas daddy don't stay in the picture, you know what I'm saying, once they, once they, you know, depart. But see, my daddy, you know, he was there for the most part. Okay, and it was you and, and how many siblings? Oh, uh, shit, it's eight of us with my daddy, but uh, with me and my mama, it's just me and my brothers. Okay, how many brothers? Uh, I got one with me and my, one with me and my mama, but I got partners, I got partners that my mama raised in the same house, like, like for real, oh. like living with us, like they wasn't with their mamas, they was with us. So you had one of these moms, one of these, you know, you everyone kind of has these neighborhood moms that if you get in trouble or whatever, you could go stay with them. That was my mom, yeah. Like kids in the neighborhood that ran away, ran away from home, they end up at Mo Three House. <laughs> they end up at my mom's house. Like she cooking, she on she don't even be knowing half the time. Like why them boys in there? Like they been over here for about two weeks now. They ain't where they mama at. She she. Ain't, you know, they hungry, she gonna feed them. Some of my partners, some of my partners end up standing so, staying so long. Like, when holidays come around, like Thanksgiving, Christmas shit, they got some up under the tree. Like, you know, like, you know, so, shit. I had that mama, the neighborhood mama, like, you come to my house. I mean, that's amazing because your mom wasn't rich. Yeah, nah, she wasn't. Nah, for real. <laughs> yeah. We were bunched up in a two bedroom, like all my partners, like make a pallet on the floor. Some of us get the bed, and it was it was it was crazy. Like she, even though this my this my house, like some of my partners will beat me to my house before I get there. They done I already ate. They done I already got their spot in the bed and everything. I gotta sleep on the floor. I gotta sleep on the couch. You know what I'm saying? So, like yeah, uh, that's kind of dope, man. I, I dig that. Yeah, I, I definitely dig that. O okay, so you're growing up in this environment, uh, but you actually started getting into uh, trouble pretty early, like 12, 13? Yeah, I had my first, I had my first gun out of 12. Yeah, I had a deuce five. I stole it from my big cousin. He doing 23 years right now. So you ended up stealing your cousin's gun. Yeah. And uh, I guess you you didn't even have the clip or nothing. It was I just the gun by clip. itself. Are you watching me? Yeah, I ain't had a clip. That's real life. I ain't had a clip to that bitch though, but I had the gun though. So, you know, I thought that was cool enough. <laughs> okay, so you steal your cousin's gun with no clip and no bullets, and what do you actually do with it? Man, I was trying to. It was it was for a protection thing, but I had I, I wasn't thinking about not having a clip. You know what I'm saying? So like, at the time, like you know, I'm not thinking about you. Not supposed to, you supposed to have bullets to the gun. You need the clip for the gun for the gun to work. I'm just thinking at the time I'm 12 years old walking around the neighborhood with a gun. That's all y'all see. Y'all don't see don't, it don't have no clip. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was just like, it was some crazy shit. Uh, I ended up getting that bitch took. Uh, police came and got it and some more shit. All type of shit, man. So. 
okay, so was there a situation with the gun that made the police come, or did someone just snitch on you and say, no, 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 it was a situation with the gun. Uh, I was getting, I was getting bullied and shit uh, in the neighborhood, but it was that ain't what made the police come. What it was was family and people around the neighborhood, like. Mo three, Mo three running around here with a gun. He got a, that boy got a gun. I don't know where he got it from. And woo the woo, all that type of shit. Mama end up finding it and shit. And so you know. Okay, police came, and uh, did you go juvenile at all? Nah, or they not, at, not, not at that time. Not at that time. You know, at that time, twelve years old, you couldn't go. You couldn't go to juvenile. You can go. You can go, but you can stay just for a little bit. But you weren't gonna do no time or no shit like that. I ain't actually start going to jail to like. Staying in there to like fourteen, like staying in there, like you know what I'm saying. So, okay, and what were you getting caught at like fourteen for? My first, my first case, aggravated robbery, deadly weapon. Yeah, I got a lot of aggravated okay. robbery. Okay, so aggravated robbery. What exactly were you doing? Uh, uh you know, <laughs> aggravated robbery. You know what you do. Okay. <laughs> All right, you, you're robbing. You're robbing people. Yeah. And you were getting caught in the process. Yeah. Okay, so fourteen, fifteen, you get caught for a robbery. What do they give you? Oh, um, first time, first time I go to jail, I stay for like I want to say like four to five months. Uh, I come back home on a monitor on probation. Uh, catch the same charge again. Now I'm going to placement. You know, in Texas we got in the juvenile system we got a thing called placement. They probably got that everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Placement is where you go to somewhere outside the juvenile, you know, they ship you somewhere. It's like a boy's home or something. You know what I'm saying? So uh, after that, it still continued. I ended up in Madlock, TYC. I went to uh, CCD. I went to Sequoia. I went to Service. I've been to a lot of this shit. Everything, uh, every correctional facility Dallas had for juvenile at the time, like, my mama had to come to this shit, and I went to all this shit. Like, Okay, so you kept going through these robberies and these, you know, and this jail time, and then at seventeen it got more serious. Yeah, I caught I caught four of them at seventeen, four aggravated robbery with a deadly weapon. I went to TDC. First time, first adult charge. The only reason they did me like this is because the juvenile charge showed the same pattern. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, what was it about robbing people that really was so appealing to you at that point? No, <laughs> you ain't got it. You, you know what I'm saying? You gotta find a way to get it, right? <laughs> right, but but you're you're getting caught in the process. You see what I'm saying? Like you're you're doing it and you're making the quick money, but you're yeah, also yeah, going you know, to jail. You got, some, you got some, you know, you got some good days. You got some bad days, man. <laughs> I had some bad days. <laughs> yeah. So then at 17. They catch you on four robberies, and I guess you were facing 45 years. Yeah. And uh, your mom tried to help, and in the process, kind of messed herself up. Lost everything. House, car, everything. She was living with my auntie. She had to move in with my auntie. Okay, so here you are messing up your own life, but now you start messing up your mom's life. Yeah, yeah. Because trying to come up with lawyer money and so forth, she ends up losing her own house, yeah. losing her car and so forth. Like, how do you, how do you really look at your mom at that point as you're doing this? Like I say, like I say, I ain't know. I was young. I didn't know the people I was affecting was around me. Like, my mom used to say, uh, I'm gonna lose my job. I'm gonna lose my job. And I, used, I ain't understand it until she was like, every time a school called me or every time somebody called me and say, your son in jail, I gotta immediately get up and leave work. My boss getting tired of hearing about, your son always doing something. Your son always did, your son always did that. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm okay. looking at it, I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it like, you know, it really didn't hit me till I got in the cell. You get what I'm saying? Like, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't. I still wasn't looking at it like while I was out doing it. Like, I ain't, I didn't see nothing wrong. I didn't feel like I was hurting nobody else. I just thought I was just hurting myself. Okay. I mean, you were facing 45 years. I mean, uh, how, what does that do to you? I really, hold on. I really wasn't facing no 45 years. That's just what they, in the system, they'll keep telling you that. They'll keep telling you the highest number to screw you. You get what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't, it wouldn't sit like the DA was like, hey, tell him this is first offer was 45 years. Like my lawyer came to me and was like, they offering 45 years, you know, woo, 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 you know what I'm saying? But you know, they, they talking. So, you know, you know how it go, like, you know. Yeah, but still, I mean, there's always a worst case situation. Yeah, like, nah, for, for sure. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> you know? You know, that, that charge, that charge whole 5 to 99 in Texas. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how it go nowhere else, but like Texas, five to nine. No, I mean, I mean, Texas don't fuck around. I mean, they Texas don't. still has a death death penalty. Yeah. I mean, when like, they say don't mess like... with Texas, they mean that in every form of fashion, like for real. Right. So you you managed to get forty five down to two. Your team. I did two on the team. But what does that mean? Uh, you signed for ten year sentence. Came home on good behavior on the two. Yeah. So then you do two years and then what, eight years probation or? Yeah, there you go. Okay, got it. Shock. Okay. So you end up going to, into an actual penitentiary at this point, an adult yeah. penitentiary, yeah. right? Yeah, I was, on, I was on like four or five different units. Uh, I went, uh, when I first caught chain, I left, I went straight to Huntsville. Huntsville, Texas, that's the Bird Unit. It's called the Bird Unit. I think that's, that's a transfer unit. I left uh, Bird Unit. I left Bird Unit and went to Robinson Unit. I left Robinson. I stayed at Robinson for like four or five days. I left Robinson Unit and my station unit was in Childress, Texas, was at the Roach Unit. I stayed I stayed at Roach most of my time and I discharged at the Wilds Unit. And that's when Dallas came and picked me up from Wilds Unit. Okay, and what was the biggest difference from going to juvenile to actual adult prison? It's like it's a big it's a big difference. It's like they tell you they tell you once you get in here like you ain't you ain't in juvenile no more. Like you know, juvenile is it's like a uh, it's not hands on really. You know, you can't really do you can't do nothing to a minor. You can't do nothing to a kid in the in the eye of the law. Like you can do a certain type of thing, but like when you are adult, it's like you gotta swim for yourself in that water. Once you get in there, it's like a guard to turn their head and like, shit, you gotta do your thing. You grown now, you know what I'm saying? But like in juvenile, it's put your hands behind your back. Say yes, sir, no, sir. Stand this way, look this way. Everybody stand in the corner, woot woo. It's like you always being monitored in juvenile. In, in prison, in TDC adult, it's like they not watching. It's like whatever happened, happens sometimes. You get what I'm saying? So, like, it's a big difference. Like, yeah. What do you think was the worst thing that you experienced in prison? Fighting for my commissary. I had six fights. I won two, lost four. Mm. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. But out of that, but out of that four I lost, they gonna tell you he ain't no hoe. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> and, and this whole time you're not even rapping at all. Nah, 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 man. Uh, I always had the talent to rap and sing, man. But nah, we wasn't. We know we was gonna be here on Vlad TV today with all the ice on. <laughs> nah, we ain't know that, man. We ain't see this coming right here. <laughs> so nah, man. I was just regular. Okay. I was just regular old Mo three, man. Okay, so you get out, and I guess your dad was the one that encouraged you to yeah, start rapping. Yeah, he encouraged me before I left, before I caught chain to TDC. Before I caught chain, he came to visit me, because it was like, once they visit me in the county, they know where I was finna go, was so far, and ain't nobody have cause like that to be, you know, going way out there. So, you know, they did all they can to visit me in the county, in Lou Steary. And so, like, that last conversation I had with him, man, he was just like, what you going to do when you get out of here, man? I don't know what else to do. I, don't, I wasn't smart in school, so I don't know nothing else. Like, shit, he was like rap. I was telling man, they don't about to make it in no rapping. Like, not around right here. Ain't nobody make it in no rapping, bro. Like, you know, he was like, shit, just tell your story. He said, everything you done ever did, just, just rap about it. You ain't got to do it no more. Just rap about it. I did that shit. Okay, so you get out, 
and you start rapping. And, you know, Dallas is kind of buzzing right now, but back then, it really wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? There yeah. was no, you know, all these popular Dallas artists that you see these days getting deals. That just wasn't even happening back then. Yeah, it was. So here you are trying to make some noise in Dallas. And, and what started happening in the beginning? Um, I make a song. I make a song. Uh, it's a remake uh, of some uh, other Dallas artists that came up before me. At the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I always used to listen to them, you know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, I'm just fucking with the song one day and I, I remake the whole song. And shit, I let somebody hear it and they was like, bro, go record this, bro. Like, go record this shit. I ain't had no studio money, you get what I'm saying? Like, uh, my cousin, he in the feds. He had ran a studio. He in the feds right now. And he was just like, little nigga, so you stay out of trouble. Use my studio. You know what I'm saying? For free. You know what I'm saying? That only lasted for a long that only lasted for a, a certain amount of time. But the time that he let me get it, like I used it to my advantage. I go and make the song. I go and make the song. I link up with uh link up with this nigga named Split from Oak Cliff. I link up with him. And they looking at me crazy. Like I'm from the north. So, you know. I walk in the studio full of old Cliff niggas, and they like, uh, man, who you is? Woo woo. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm such and such. I'm, I'm three. Uh, oh, Courtney B, your cousin? I'm like, yeah. So they were like, uh, what you trying to do? You know, we, I produce, I make beats and shit. I run his studio. He told me to uh, record you. You know what I'm saying? So I tell him the song that I'm finna remake. It was like a big song, like for Dallas history. So when I tell them I'm finna remake it, they look at me crazy like, nigga, you finna fuck, hell nah, nigga. You finna fuck this song up, hell nah. Like the nigga, the nigga who was producing, I was like, bro, I just need you to remake the beat like this. I want it to sound like this. And he was like, man, hell nah, bro. Like, I don't wanna be a part of that shit. Like, fam, you finna fuck up a Dallas classic. I said, bro, just do it. He bathed that bitch. I went in there and spit that hoe. Nigga was like, bro, you cold in the bitch. <laughs> You ice, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. What else can I make for you? There we be. He'll be at the relationship right there. What else can I make for you? So boom, like after that, it just it started circulating, man. So you know. Okay, and your first few big songs were like "Hold Your Tongue" yeah. all the way down. Yeah, that's the song. Hold your tongue. That's the remake. There it goes. Oh, that's the remake. That's my first okay. song. That's the remake. Yeah. Okay. And then you released uh, your first album. Was it Shadows Reloaded? No, Shadows. See, Shadows Reloaded, what, what got everybody to pay, like what got everybody on, like Shadows Reloaded to everybody was my first one. But Shadows was the first one, like, to let niggas know, like, shit, I'm, I'm trying to do something, like, I got something to say. But Shadows Reloaded is what broke everything, like, so people take, like, Shadows Reloaded, they look at that, like, that's the first one. You know what I'm saying? That's the second one. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay. Okay. And why the name Shadows? It's my favorite gangster movie. Oh, the, the Jamaican movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I've actually uh, I interviewed Kamadi Marley. Yeah, okay. we talked about the we talked about that. Yeah, now, that's yeah, a dope movie. That's man. my favorite movie, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They're supposed to make a part two at one point, but that that never happened. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I mean, shit, uh, DJ Khaled is in it. They had the, uh, yeah. Wyclef is Wyclef in it. Wyclef in there. <laughs> Bunch of people, yeah, bunch of people. That's the skinny that's DJ another, Khaled. Did nobody know? Yeah, the skinny, the skinny. A lot DJ of people Khaled, didn't know exactly. that was DJ Khaled out there with the burner. Yeah, on the block. Yeah, exactly. And why the name Mo Three? Uh, uh, my daddy named Third. It's kind of my daddy, Triple L Cool Mel. That's Third. You know what I'm saying? So I'm his junior. I'm little three. You know what I'm saying? Now I got a little three. Now I got my son. He a little three. But at the time. I was a little three to my daddy because his name third, and uh, on my mama's side they call me Lil Mo. So it's Lil Mo. I'm over there with my my mama people. And them is oh yeah, my cousin. Them, yeah, it's Lil Mo. It's Lil Mo. You know what I'm saying? And I'm over here when I'm thugging them in the summertime with my daddy. And them side yeah, little three. Woo -woo. I just it's Mo three. Okay, so right around 2016, that's when things started to kind of take off with rap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. You can say that. Okay. You can say that. 
So what starts to change when now you're you're actually getting to transition away from street money into real, you know, legit music money? Yeah. It was shit. Popularity, like I always been somebody like no cap, like I always been popular. Like I was the kid getting in trouble and shit at school and in the neighborhood, like running with the cliques and shit. Like I was I always here huncho, like, you know, like so I always had a name before the before the fame, like, I knew I was gonna be something. You get what I'm saying? So, like, all it did was just, it just piled up on top of popularity, just piled up and just, it just went through the roof. Like, cause now it's like, we not, we was, we, you know, we was looking up and hanging with this Mo3, but like, now it's this Mo3. So, you know, all it did was just a lot of more benefits, a lot of more different relationships. I, I, I got to see a lot of, Different shit, a lot of different experiences and shit. So, you know, it was fun. Plus that money, like, when you ain't never had no money like that type shit, like, oh yeah, I was having fun. But I had seven cars at one time. Well, you had seven cars. Yeah, I mean. Okay, can you can you name the cars? I had um Porsche 911, I had AMG 550, I had a, a Benz Coupe, a 350, uh, I had a 2015 Camaro. On uh, foes, I had a, a Challenger, a white Challenger. I had a goddamn, uh, it was like a Jeep Cherokee, a, a black one, and I had that that six forty Beamer. Yeah. Okay, I mean most of those are luxury cars. Yeah. I mean, Once at one time. Having, what's the point of having seven cars? Like I, I've had two cars at one point, and I'm like, I don't even need these two cars. Let me get rid of one of them. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Let's hear it. I like keeping the real. I told you about that popularity with your name. It came, I got different relationships. I, I ran into a car dealersman who was jugging me the cars. I just cashed them out. And I was getting them bitches. Like, you know, fuck going through the through the people, going in there. I ain't, ain't had to do none of that. I'm bring him that cash, he's gonna bring them keys. Like, so. I just come get every after every time I do a show, he you see me. It's like every time you do a show, you come get another car. Yeah, hey, yeah, like go, like go on, like yeah, hey, like for real. I, like for real, hey, man. man if, if that if that's how you want to do it, yeah. that's how you're gonna do it. The insurance costs alone though must have been kind of crazy. He's parked in different places. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't have enough garage room. Two condos, yeah. a house. So they was parked over here, parked over there, parked over here. I ain't not. It was just, they were parked everywhere. You know. Okay. And, you know, growing up, Boosie was your favorite rapper. He's still my favorite rapper. Still your favorite rapper. He ain't my favorite rapper. He's my favorite street nigga. That's my favorite person. I'm not a rapper. I mean, Boosie's one of my favorite people, too. I mean, he's a regular on Vlad TV. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you've seen the interviews. I have. <laughs> I've seen what he be up here. <laughs> uh, I, know, I know you've seen the interviews. Yeah, I have. I have. Um, well, you actually ended up linking up with Boosie at one point. Yeah, hey, yeah. He called me. Oh, he called you? Hey, yeah. It was 2016. He called me in 2016. He FaceTimed me. I thought I was- That's, that's what Boosie does. Boosie will FaceTime you out the Somebody blue. Somebody gave him my number and he FaceTimed. And then you guys actually started doing some music together. Yeah. Yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, he FaceTimed me. I was in the barbershop. I was in the barbershop getting a haircut. I damn near fucked up my haircut. Trying to look at that FaceTime. Like, like shit. After that, I met him in the mile. I met him in the mile, Redbird Mile in Oak Cliff in Dallas. He had a show down here, and uh, he was doing a meet and greet in the mile at the Foot Locker and shit. I think it was a Champs of Foot Locker. It was one of them. I went there. I went in there. She, and it's, it's on YouTube and shit. That that whole video clip where I met him and shit. Like, oh, this is the nigga they been, I've been hearing about. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? Whoa, whoa. After that shit, he flew me to his house and shit. We we got it on. Right, I mean, he actually co-signed you. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate that to this day. I mean, how did it feel to have your favorite rapper co-sign you like that? That's what I'm saying. That's some that's some most shit. That's how I know. Like we really hear it. Like like I say, we really hear on Vlad TV. Like like that type shit. Like we really hear it. Like that's how I knew. Like damn, bro. Like it's one thing to have a rapper. It's one thing to have a rapper co-sign you, you know what I'm saying? But like, when it's your favorite rapper, 
you know, who you know word for word, who you, who you live by, like who you wake up and listen to on your way to school and shit, call your phone and bite you to his ass and shit. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, we here. That shit real. Well, I think it was on Say Cheese that you talked about our Vlad TV interview, the, you know, how most rappers getting killed in their own city. You know, yeah. the Boosie interview. You said that that really affected you. Yeah. Yeah, nah. I mean, be, being the hottest rapper in Dallas, you know, comes with a lot of love, but also comes with a lot of hate, especially when you're the only one, you yeah. know, at the time. Yeah. So what, what started coming in terms of the hate part? Like, what you mean? Well, just just being in your neighborhood and being Mo three the the it famous started, rapper instead of just being Mo three the you know the neighborhood star. It started with uh, it started the hate. I'm the the hates in the neighborhood started with old gang members that I used to get into when I was right here at this level. Even when that beef was dead, once I got here, they just restarted it all over again. You know what I'm saying? This was a perfect time for them to like for them to be on. It was a perfect time for them to be heard and, you know, shit. And it was like easy. It was right up their alley. Like, shit, we done already beat for Mo 3 before when he was just dead Mo 3. It ain't going to be hard. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know, so that's where the hate started with that. Like, yeah. And, you know, shit, everybody ain't a fan of you. So them became haters. The people who don't like you, they became haters. So it's like, shit, it circulated. But... Different situations, it, it, it get really and really, it get worse and worse. Like so, you know. Well, I mean, you've actually talked about getting into a bunch of shootouts. Yeah. You actually never got hit though. Nah, thank God. <laughs> I mean, if you were to count how many shootouts you've been in, and I don't care about the actual situation, but if you if you were to say how many times were you in an area where bullets are flying around you? I'm a shootout side fifteen, so shit's too many. 15 shootouts. No, I said I've been in shootouts since I was 15. So. Oh, okay. So it's, oh. so it's, so it's, it's stay up there. It's a lot. Okay. And at a certain point, do you go, okay, like I'm just getting lucky now. You know what I'm saying? Like a little bit, if that gun would have been a little bit, a couple millimeters over to the left, yeah. it'd be like, oh man, Mo3 was the hottest in the city. You know, we're going to put him on a t-shirt. Yeah. It, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, bullets don't have a name. Bullets don't really have a function. Once they leave that gun, you don't know what's going to happen. Nah, Ricochets, you know. the whole nine. Nah, you you know, know, like, for, for example, I just interviewed, um, you know, we haven't put out this interview yet, but I interviewed Keek the Sneak from my hometown of Oakland. He got shot up in his car. His whole spleen got removed. A lot of people rooting for me. A lot of people feel this shit is just unjust. But then they don't even know about the part that I don't have a spleen. They remove my spleen. They don't They don't know about the part my immune system is not that strong. This is the shit that people don't glorify and people don't talk about. But this is what happens when, when you're talking about bullets. Yeah. Nah, you know, I know the ins and the outs. I know the goods and the bads with this shit, you know. What you sign up for, you're supposed to already know what you what you up against. You know what I'm saying? Like, But like I say, I was one of them that was blessed. Like, I know a, I know a lot of people. I know a lot of real gangsters and... You know, real street niggas who who never been to jail, like fuck getting shot. I know a lot of gangsters and real street niggas who never been to jail. So it's like, and them be the ones that be blessed. Like, and I was like, I was one of the ones that were blessed to to never be, you know, hit up. So came close a lot of times. Yeah. Well, I mean, you said you've been on paper since two thousand six. Two thousand six, man. It's thirteen years now. Yeah. I just got off 2017. <laughs> okay. So then, so then in 2017, there was a shooting that happened at a nightclub. Yeah. And uh, you got arrested for that. Yeah. What were they trying to blame you for? A shooting. Okay. Oh, so they, they were trying to blame you social for the media, actual shooting. Social media. It's still on social media to this day. If you... If you uh, if you type in on social, not, I ain't talking about YouTube and shit like that. Google, I'm talking about if you go to social media, you know, Facebook carry old posts. It, it's still like you know, it still say them old posts. You know how they it pop up in your shit like a memory. 
a lot of the memories pop up around that day, around that time. You get what I'm saying? And I just look at the old posts when people were saying, Mo3 did this, Mo3 did this, Mo3 did this. You know, once somebody say your name so many times, you know this, this who they're going to come get. Okay, so you got arrested for that shooting. Yeah. Uh, what ultimately happened with that case? You, it's, it's over. I mean, I mean it, got, it got dropped? It's over. No, it's, no, it's over. It's no case. Okay. There's no case. It's... There's no case. Okay. Well, then a month later, you get arrested again uh, for, I guess, for a fight that happened. Yeah. So it's it's happening like one after another. Like yeah. here you are, you're, you're popping, and now you're getting arrested more. Yeah. It's like it's, it's, it's going good for me, and then here come out this bad shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, because if something happens, people aren't going to know the the random guy, you know, in the in the Nike sweatsuit. They're going to know Mo three. That's right. <laughs> you, you, you're the recognizable one out of that out of a group. You yeah, see what I'm that's, saying? That's right. <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> it is fucked the up. The person with the name up. gonna get the blame. You get what I'm saying? I don't be knowing. I don't be knowing what be going on out here, man. Like I don't be. Man. Yeah, I mean, it, it a takes rapper, a minute. <laughs> I mean, it takes a minute to get adjusted to fame and money yeah. because you, you basically just can't keep doing the same shit between the, the arrests and the lawsuits and the haters and all yeah. the all the other bullshit. Like, it's like you know, I've gone to, through my fair share of bullshit. Like, it's like your dog with all these fleas on you trying to get them bitches off. Like, they biting the shit at you. Okay. And I guess you spent like 90000 in lawyer and court yeah, fees. Yeah. And, and to keep it real, look, keep it real. That was all the money I had at the time. I went broke. I couldn't buy my son no Similac milk. No $13 can of milk. Wow. Yeah. I wasn't finna ask nobody for nothing. You get what I'm saying? But, you know, shout out to the real niggas who, who I ain't have to ask, who just stood up and, you know, just, I got you, bro. You get what I'm saying? Well, you know, when I hear that someone spent ninety thousand to to keep to stay out of prison, what I what that means to me is that if you didn't have that type of money, you'd be in prison right now. Yeah. If you were a public defender, you'd probably be in prison right now. Yeah, no, nah, facts, facts, yeah, facts. Especially when you this type of when you in this lane, you see, Vlad, you see every every big artist or somebody got something going for themselves. They gonna get you. They gonna do whatever they can. Like them prosecutors and them, dick, they gonna get you. Like, so you better have some type of money or some type of relationship. We gonna get you. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, especially with all the priors and and the history and everything else like that. And then they don't even make it look good. And they don't even, that, that, like, even though you know, I tell a judge I'm a changed person. Like, you know, I used to get pulled over. Like, thank God I ain't been pulled over in a long time. Last time I had my Hummer truck. That Hummer was some something, something was wrong with that Hummer. It was bad luck. And that was last year. And this is like they kept pulling me over in that bitch. I got rid of that. But it's like they see all that shit that happened a long time ago. I'm like, fam, that's what I was. That is not me no more, man. I'm doing something else. You get what I'm saying? But it's like it's it's gonna be there. So you know. So then, I think it was was it last year. That you dropped, uh, everybody not your friend. Yeah, you dropped it by yourself first. Yeah, this everybody was on, your uh, friend. My, my, uh, the one with me by myself, twelve million views. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now on YouTube. Uh, that, so that was on Shadows okay. 3.0. <laughs> yeah, that's me by myself. That's the rhythm. Right, and then you drop a remix with Boosie. Boosie called me. He called me at DJ Kelly house. I'm sitting in the parking lot. And he called me from Kelly house. He was like, man, I need that everybody. Like, I'm trying to get on there. I, I was like, yo. He was like, nah, for real. Send it to me right now. I'm at DJ Kelly house right now. I'm finna get in the studio. I sent him that bitch. I mean, that's a hell of a song. Appreciate it. That's real. It's a, it's a hell of a song. And honestly, I mean, I like Boosie's version as well, since I'm, I'm a Boosie fan. But really, you held that song down by yourself just fine. Like, Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I think it's one of these like kind of messages that everyone can can relate to. It's I lost like, all yeah, my, I lost all my friends. All them, all them niggas that stayed at my mama house who I just told you I lost all of them. They're all gone. They all gone. 
I feel you. Shout out to the niggas around me. Listen, listen. This real life, you can just meet people that be realer than the niggas you grew up with all your life. Yep. No, I mean, all of my old friends, I don't fuck with none of them anymore. None of them. As soon as I start getting successful, they start feeling like they deserve the money that I was making for themselves as well. Like, I, I need to help them out with their current situations because they was just around. Not that they were helping with anything I was doing, just because they were around. Right. And um, it turns into some fuck shit yeah. to the point where you you can't keep fucking with people anymore. You know what? Look, I um, uh, I my partners back in the day, them niggas was always talented at selling dope. They was they was well they was good hustlers. I didn't have quite have it down packed. You know I don't you know I'm a real street nigga. I done did everything like. They had it down packed, so you know they they had it to go, to go buy new Jordans and five hundred ones when they was hot. Levi jeans, you know, go buy this, go buy this, go buy that. I couldn't do that, but not once did I ever hate on them though. You know what I'm saying? I watch my partners, I watch my partners. We go to the club. I watch them. Hey, hey, can you pay me get in? Like, you know, oh no, it's cool. You okay? You don't pay for me get in? That's cool. I still ain't mad at you. I watch when we get in that that picture booth. Them pull out racks. And I'm the only one in the picture just holding up my hands because I, I don't drink, so I ain't holding up no cup. Like, so I never hate it, though. I never hate it. Like, my partners had cars and shit. They had their own apartments. I'm still staying with my mama or I'm living off a bitch. Like, I never hate it. Never. Then when I get right here, it's like, three, give us this. Give us that. Oh, you know, fuck you then, nigga. All right, so. Yeah, man, I mean, it's growth. I mean, if, if the, as you grow, if the people around you aren't growing with you, you kind of have to just, you know, leave them behind. You know, people don't like to hear that type of shit, but it is what it is. Yeah. You know, unless you're like a LeBron and you could really give all your all your homies jobs like that, like, <laughs> you yeah, know, right. realistically, if they're not pulling their weight, yeah, it just man. is what it is. But you know, teamwork make the dream work, man. Like, shit. Everybody can't be no rapper, so shit. I understand it, but help me do something. Nigga, go, go out here, pass out a thousand CDs, nigga. Go run up here to the... Uh, to the fly place, nigga, print up 500 posters for me, go hang them up. Nah, I ain't finna do all that lame ass shit, nigga. I ain't finna do all that. Nigga, I ain't finna be hanging up no posters, nigga. What you think I am a poster man, nigga? <laughs> but you'll turn around and say, damn, bitch, I can't get 5,000. So, you know. Yeah. Well, I guess you're a, you're a probation officer. Try to get you to, to quit rap and get a regular job at one point? Yeah, man. She told me rap wasn't no job. She told me that ain't no job. And was going to violate me, too. Really? For rapping? No, it was going to violate me. If, you, if you're not going to get no job, I'm going to violate you. Like, I'm well, that's, that's what I'm saying. If you stayed as a rapper without I'm a real job, I'm you're going to violate like, you. I'm telling you, I'm rapping. Like, this how I'm paying these probation fees. We interviewed Yellow Beezy, who's also from Dallas. Yeah. Uh, and at one point, there, there was some sort of friction between y'all, and, and he explained it on another interview how it was just some stupid shit that a girl was trying to get in the middle of. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it, really, it really wasn't any kind of real beef. It seemed like the internet was trying to turn to something that it's not. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't no, nah. It wasn't okay. no beef. And, and Yellow Beezy's dope, man. I, I think, you know... When you see people like you and Yellow Beezy and, and Go Yayo and everything else like that, I think that you guys are lifting Dallas, you know, just the perception of Dallas a lot. When Yellow Beezy got shot up, what were your thoughts about that? She and I got to stay out the way. Okay. She's real out here. She, niggas get hit up every day out here. Like, it's, it's the world. Like, you know, somebody right now, we talking right now, somebody right now probably getting shot up right now. Like, you said, you got to stay out the way, man. There was a song that you dropped recently, and in the beginning of the intro, it's like a couple people talking, and it mentions you and Yellow Beezy. But yeah. I didn't really understand what it meant. Can you, can you explain that? Yeah, nah, you know, they was uh, they was mis misinformed about some. About some rap beef, and I was like, nah, I ain't got no rap beef with nobody. I ain't got no rap beef with no rap in my city. <laughs> no rap beef. And they was just, all that was was just something that they heard, you know, shit. You know, they not in the street, so, you know, 
they job is to report like the news. So, you know, they just going off what they heard. And, you know, so like, nah, I just cleared it up on my interview when I went up there and talked to them. Like, nah, ain't no rap beef. Ain't no problem, man. Okay. Now, what happened between you and Trap Boy Freddy? What? The Trap Boy Freddy. What do you mean what happened? I mean, there was a story that the y'all had some sort of situation and there was supposed to be some surveillance footage. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, someone getting ran down on the street or, or something. Did you see it? I did not see it. Oh, well, then I don't know what you're talking about because I don't know about nobody <laughs> running down no street. Well, well, hold on. Hold on. I'm pulling it up right now. Pull it, it up. Shows some, I'm pulling it up. So I guess he claimed that he ran you down last year and there's some surveillance footage. And I guess you, did you responded. See, do you see somebody running down the street? Oh, I, I do not. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what you're talking <laughs> about. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... So you're saying that all that is just nonsense? Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Internet be reaching. Blair. I've had Trap Boy Freddy on my show. Shout out to all the rappers in my city. We is doing our thing. You get what I'm saying? We, right. We don't talk about all that. <laughs> okay, well I'm just saying, all, the, the, all the rap we doing, ain't no, ain't no rap beef, man. Ain't no rap beef. No. They can't, okay. they can't put me, people can't put me in no rap beef, man. I don't, I don't get into all that, man. I don't, I don't, I ain't my, they make my, my skin crowd, like it's, it's 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 nasty, like. Well, I mean, that's what I want to hear, man, because because Dallas is popping right now, yeah. but all it takes is just a bunch of bullshit to happen between yeah. between the rappers, and then you know a lot of doors will get closed. Because I guess at one point you got banned from performing in clubs in Dallas, right? Hey, yeah, for shit, a damn near a year. Right, that was over the shooting incident. Yeah. Right, so fucked, here you are. And that was fucked up. Right. You're one of the hottest dudes in the Something city. Something happened you in can't Fort Worth. 45 minutes away from Dallas. Y'all telling me I can't come to clubs. I'm banning. Y'all trying to ban the music and all that. Something that happened 45 minutes away from Dallas. I didn't understand. Right. And that's my point. I'm not here to try to, to drum up whatever mm. beef it is. Like is. I'm here to say, like, all this shit is bad for business. And ultimately, like all y'all are winning in your own way, yeah. and you know to put put aside whatever bullshit because this all just looks like bullshit, honestly. When I'm looking at it, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, grainy grainy footage and yeah, I don't even see that. You know, like, internet like I don't even know like I don't even know the niggas who sit behind computers and put stuff together. Like we're gonna put this right here. This look like this. And put this together. Put this together. And make a big ass collage clip like. Like an old ass PowerPoint back in the day, like that shit goofy in the bitch, and like and it just, I don't know nothing about none of that. Like I just, like they, that shit crazy. You can't tell, you can't beat social media. The no. internet gonna always win. So like it's like always. whatever they say, the people gonna run with it. Like so I don't even get into that. Well, like I said, man, I've I've had both of y'all on my show now, and it just seems like it'd be good for the city for all the bullshit to get put aside. You know, y'all don't got to be best friends, or mm. y'all don't have to work on music together. Yeah. But but to just put the bullshit aside, everyone will end up making more money and getting more fans, yeah. and doing more shows and and getting bigger deals and everything else like that. So, mm. I just want to put that out there. Okay. Well, at one point you actually had a deal. Yeah. With uh, was it Epic? It was like uh, Liger signed through Epic. Okay. Yeah. So what happened with that whole situation? Well, where was you? What do you mean? The fo after that, this, 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 this is down here. Like, they didn't want nothing to do with me. Oh, because of the shooting incident. Yeah. Oh, so you so you were signed to Epic Be and before Ron Spouty. Okay, and and that situation happened, which you weren't you weren't even convicted for. Yeah, but like it was just so much of a a thing that was just been going around. It was just like it it, it was interfering with my. With my whole little deal I just signed, you get what I'm saying? So. Okay, and I guess you bought your way out of your contract? Yeah. Okay, that's gangster. I like that. <laughs> that shit ain't gangster. <laughs> no, no, buying your that's way out of your stressful. deal? I think that's kind of gangster. No, you got to understand. Buying your way out of a contract and lawyer fees. You get what I'm saying? So you got to do both and both. Yeah, I mean, but you signed. Yeah. You know, you can't you can't get mad over a contract that you signed yourself. Yeah, no, nah, I ain't ultimately. mad. I'm, 
I mean, I'm past it. Like I, I ain't got no, I ain't got no problem with them and and with Liger and Ron Spouting. Shout out to them. You know what I'm saying? Like we we over here now. <laughs> okay. I mean, would you sign another deal with a major, or are you strictly independent now? You know, if a situation is right, you know, I'm gonna do my thing. I got mass to feed. I got people depending on me. You get what I'm saying? Vlad, these niggas be lying when they be saying, oh, I'm independent, I do this by myself. Yeah, I know. You know, okay, I'm glad you know. I, 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 I'm I, I, glad you know. I, Social I, media don't seem to, don't, don't fucking know. He by us, he independent. Nah, 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 you just don't see old boy in that corner over there that's funding everything, that's putting the plays together, like, so don't let these niggas be lying, talking about, yeah, you know, I did it all on my own. Uh, when they get to this, when they, when they take off, like no, it's only a handful of people. Like like they they talk like they was the, the master P and cash money's around this hoe. You know what I'm saying? Like nah, bro. So like yeah, a good situation come my way. Like that fit me, fit my brand. Like it ain't all about just signing no deal to say nigga I got a deal. Like nah, it gotta make sense. Nigga gotta add up. Like you know, especially if it's a career. Like you know, it gotta be longevity. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, we. I mean, we're in a, a time right now where you could be independent and potentially make more money. Than yeah. Oh no, facts. Cause it's cause it's internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this technology, like it's, like, bro, look at y'all, bro. All these cameras in here and shit. Like, it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot y'all can do with this shit. Like, right. I mean, this is all independent. Like what you're looking yeah, at. Like, this I, I know. Office I, that's that you're what, in, I own all this shit. That's what I'm saying. Hundred percent. I yeah. don't have any partners. I don't have any investors. There's no corporation behind me. Yeah, this is all my shit. And honestly, twenty years ago, this would not have been possible. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. So that's why I'm saying like this shit right here. That's why. I, that's why I said that like this shit right here. Like it's independent. Like you know, say cheese independent. My nigga Sean Cotton. Like shit like yep. this. So I, I know with this technology and this internet, all this shit going on. Yeah, you know. It seems like you have some new jewelry on. Yeah. Some new chains. Yeah. My, hello, my, I brought my boy with me. You see him? <laughs> That's Roy Lee. That? That's Roy Lee, man. I brought my boy. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Bitch, we on Vlad. <laughs> you ain't get my nigga no interview. He, we, I brought him with me. We on Vlad TV, nigga. <laughs> For real. Uh, he ended up passing, right? Yeah. Yeah, rest in peace, man. Yeah. Why the name Osama on the chains? Yeah. Oh look, get that uh, Osama three line on the bottom of that bitch too, and diamond. And I'm done. Nobody catch that because I know it's it got a lot of it like it got a lot going on. Two hundred and fifty seven carats and shit. But Osama three line on the bottom, man. That's my that's my man. I'm a Gemini man, so you know that's my that's my other that's my other me. Osama is my other me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's the bad guy. <laughs> All right. I mean, it obviously comes from Osama bin Laden. Yeah, that's my uncle. That's your uncle. Yeah. I'm nephew. Okay. I mean, why why compare yourself to, you know, who the world's biggest terrorist essentially? Because in this game, I'm like a terrorist. Like, I'm. I might be this tall, but you know, the bombs be little. The littlest bomb got the biggest. Is you know what I'm saying? Okay. I'm, I mean. What's it like going through the airport with an Osama chain? Man, it's funny. Every time I, I, la I get to laugh every time. <laughs> I mean, what is what does Homeland Security do when they look at it? Bro, dude? I got bro. Listen, I get I get a, a special search every time. It's cool though. It's cool though. You know what I'm saying? They don't be disrespectful. They just want to be careful. But it'd be funny though because I'd be like, man, listen, I'm black. I'm a nigga. Hey, you know? <laughs> I don't know, the man with the beard? Yeah, I then mean, I got the beard. I said they fucked it up when I got the beard, so now I'm looking real, you know what I'm saying? I'm looking real terrorist around this bitch. I mean, you kind of, you know, you got the gun Egyptian. on it too? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Like you you, now you, you got to make see, it a little too easy for them. You got to see the white people face, boy. They be like, <laughs> I be like, man, it's all right. It's <laughs> they be looking like, y'all finna let him get on this airplane? I be like, man. Oh, so you don't even try to put your jewelry in your bag. You actually are wearing nah, it. No, because I don't, uh-uh, uh-uh. I, re, I already got to go through the metal detector thing. So when you go through there, sh put your hands up. Everything that they going to see already, they ain't got to search and look through that and be dragging it. They see it on you. So they be like, oh, just count this. 
all this right here, you just count that. Okay, boop, we count that shit. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going through there and be like, you, it's like you don't want them to go through your bag and pull out a, a something with a gun on it and be like, <laughs> I'd rather just wear it so you know it's a necklace. It's a necklace. It's just a necklace. You know what I'm saying? So. I mean, we're kind of in an interesting time right now with chain snatching. Yeah. Uh, do you see the whole uh, YB and Almighty J situation? Yeah. You see how badly his face got cut? Yeah, it's fucked up. It's uh, 300 stitches. You know, people talk about buck 50s. I mean, that's that's two buck 50s right there. Yeah, it is. That's I mean, do you feel do you feel like a target walking around with that much jewelry? Uh, God on my side, and God gonna be on their side. So, God is on their side, and God is on my side. So, I'm all right. Okay. I'm do wearing my security. I, I pay for this motherfucking necklace. I'm wearing this bitch. Okay. I mean, do you have actual security with you when you walk around? No, I just got good friends, man. We just we are good friends, and you know. I got my homeboys with me, you know. I, security sometimes is with me with the shows and stuff, you know. When the promoter book me, you know, they got their own security, you know, that accommodate me and shit. Shout out to them, you know. But other than that, like, I ain't worried about none of that, bro. So you know, I ain't got no security. I'm not, I'm not out here. Nobody chasing me down, trying to do nothing to me. So I ain't worried about none of that. Yeah, I go and get regular security when I go out. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I go and get actual armed. You know, professional security. Yeah, so no, nah, no. Nah, you know, certain situations you do have to, you do have to do that. You get what I'm saying? It ain't about being hard. It ain't about being gangster. You know, it's about sometimes saving yourself a case. You know, and doing it the legit way, doing it the right way. But like, like I say, like, nah, I ain't got no security around me. I ain't, I ain't really too much focus on that. I'm, I, I don't think about the negative. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm always trying to keep a positive mind state. Cause if I think about somebody snatching my chain, like the day ain't even gonna be going right. Like, well, I mean, unfortunately, in this day and age, you know, because you talked about how, you know, you heard there's money on your head. <laughs> I mean, I, I've gotten those type of DMs. You know, I've gotten someone DMing me <laughs> saying they put thirty thousand on my head. <laughs> you be watching this? What you do? Sit on the computer. <laughs> I'm looking at these DMs like I got thirty thousand on your head. Was your computer geek growing like, up? You grew up. You grew up on a computer. Just you knew everything about the computer. What, what do you mean? Like when you was growing up, like you knew, like yeah, yeah. of course. You was yeah. yeah you, <laughs> That's me. You was hacking shit, looking in the shit you had on business. <laughs> yeah. No, but no. I mean, I've, like I said, I, I've had people DM me and say they got they put thirty thousand on my head. Uh, and you know, you talked about you getting those type of DMs and those yeah, type of I rumors get that all the time. It's it's normal. It's, it is. Unfortunately, you're right. It becomes normal after a while. It do become the first normal. time you see it, you're like, "What the fuck?" And then you're like, eh, "Another one of these." Yeah, another one of these. Like somebody threatened my life. Like man. Yeah, I'm I remember scared, one though. point. Well, I remember at one point I said, "Fuck it, let me just go to the police station and see if, if I could just report this to have a paper trail." And they were like, "Well, we can't really do anything about this because it's only considered a threat if if it's credible. Like if they." Are in your vicinity with a gun or something like yeah, that. If they just DM you some shit like that, it just doesn't. We can't even do nothing yeah, about it. Man. So it's I like you just gotta sit there and put up with this I'm bullshit. For my motherfucking life, of all these motherfucking threats I'm getting. Yeah, I got. Kids. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I got guns in my house. I, I'm not fucking around. I live I in a gated no community. Guns. <laughs> nah, man. Yeah. Uh. -uh. uh yeah, man. But, I mean, you see the situation with YB and Almighty J. I guess, uh, you know, the rap -a -lot chain got snatched, and now you see J Prince, you know, yeah. doing his whole thing. Do you know J Prince at all? Yeah. yeah. Being from Texas? Yeah, I know them, know them. Okay. They invited me to their dinner. You know, okay. I was uh, eating steak and shrimp with T.I., J Prince, Meek Mia, uh, who I was there? Trader True, I don't know, yeah, man. I shout shout out Trader True, man, for that, man. Yeah, like that was yeah, a nice. Trade the homie, man. I'm that no was a nice whatever. experience, man. Like, yeah. So, why do you think there's a certain type of stigma behind stealing a rap -a lot chain? It's just like a, it's like a chain you don't take. Like that man built that man built a legacy behind that that chain. It ain't about that chain. It's that name on that chain. 
You know what I'm saying? People think it's about the chain. It's that name on that chain. Like, like you just don't do it. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, Jay Prince is considered the boogeyman of hip-hop for a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he cool. That's what I heard. That's what I heard, man. We were supposed to do an interview. It never happened. cool. Me, me and Willie D are actually pretty good friends, and me and Scarface are cool. So uh, really? I've, I've heard all the little Jay stories over the years. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. You know, there, there's a very interesting kind of a thing that I just want to talk to you about when it comes to hip hop and when it comes to street mentality. You know, recently I interviewed a, a regular on the show. His name is BG Knockout. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with him? Uh uh-uh. BG Knockout, he used to roll with Easy E. He's a, a Crip, uh, you know, from Compton, you know, who'd been in and out of prison his whole life. And he said something very interesting, um, you know, about the concept of snitching. So you would not snitch on your worst enemy. No, I can't. No, I wouldn't. See, there's a thing. Let me just tell you this. Now, <clears throat> this is something I tried to talk to my homies about, if they remember, right? But like certain gangs or certain races in groups have certain policies. You ever heard the book called The Art of War? Yeah, Sun Tzu. Okay, so this is one of the books that, you know, prison gangs and groups read in jail. They study this book and they, they, they live by it. Now, the whites in prison have a policy that they can tell on anybody that's not a part of their group. Hmm. It comes from the art of war. It's pretty much, you know, getting rid of your enemy by any means. And the the greatest war fought is one that, I mean, the greatest war won is one that you don't have to fight necessarily, right? So um, they have this thing, yo. And and one thing that I do know is that if you at war at odds with somebody or with an enemy and you don't fight the war the same way, probably you're probably not going to win. If you're not willing to go to the same extreme, you're probably not going to win. You know? So I presented this idea to my homeboys, you know what I mean? And they just so, they so stuck on the old days. Like, you know what I mean? Like the old ways that hasn't gotten us anywhere. From your point of view, when it comes to snitching, are you allowed to snitch on? Your enemies, or are you just not allowed to snitch at all? Listen, if you out here doing something you ain't got no business doing, you need to stand up on all 10 toes that God gave you and be a man and accept your consequences. You don't need to, if, you, if you're not going to do that, you don't need to even be jumping in that game. Like, that's just point blank, period. Don't even, like, you sign up for boxing and you get punched in the mouth, you can't be crying. You sign up to be a chef in the kitchen and the fire jump up off the stove and burn you, you can't be trying to sue these people saying that they kiss. If you ain't got no business doing something, you know what I'm saying, like, just stay, stay out, just, just, you know, leave it alone. The okay. streets is the streets. Stay on the sidewalk. Stay on the sidewalk. Uh, have you had a situation where people snitched on you? Uh, my best friend. Your best friend snitched on you? Best friend. Can you talk about that situation? Yeah, it's, that's what I went to prison for. Oh, for the two years? Yeah. Over that robbery? Oh, well, it was four robberies, four. you said? I only had two, but I took his two. After I took his two, he still told on me. I already took your two. What did you tell for? Okay, wait, hold on. This, this sounds crazy. So you had four robberies. I had being, two. You had two robberies you'd been charged Then I came for. back and got indicted two more times. But I'm knowing because, that these not my... It's cool. I'm gonna okay. take my partner charge. I'm already in here. He not in here. I'm already in here. You went and told on me. I like why I was gonna take. I was already taking the charge anyway. Like, so your best friend, who I guess was was involved in all this this whole time. Yeah. You get caught. He in the feds right now. Okay. For doing something. You see, listen. Calm as a motherfucker. He in the feds for something he ain't even do. (laughs) 
Okay, so y- you take these four charges. He gets picked up, I guess, as part of the investigation or something? We got picked up together. Okay. Yeah, we got picked up together. I just stayed because my, my background, uh-huh. he had no record. So then he turned around and just told on you in terms of... They they, they turn around. They, you know, like I say, we ain't had no money to bond out. His mom never had some money to bond out. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, prior to my probation, I already was on probation, like juvenile probation. Like, you know what I'm saying? So uh, everything on my end was just fucked up. But him, he got, you know, he got a bond. His mom and them bond him out. You know what I'm saying? But you still, just because you bond out don't mean the case over with. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he was still, he had the case. That's his case. Like his name was on the paper. That's it's your case. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know if they, I don't know what they did to him, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I wasn't there. I was in a cell. I was on the North Tower, 7W01 in Lou Sterry. And they know that's the jungle. In Dallas, you on North Tower, it's, it's rocking. It's the jungle. Ag, ag tank, capital murder tank. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm 17 over here. Like, and he was older than me. So, shit. They put that press on him. Basically, what was so was, uh, shit, you gonna take this charge, you know? It looked like he the mastermind. Look at all his prior charges. They the same as these. You don't have no background. I can't, I can't really believe that you had something to do with what he did because, it, it, you know what I'm saying? It looked bad on my end already. Yeah, he went ahead and told you that he did that. Man. He did that and did this and woo the woo. But I was I already like, I'm taking a charge. I was like, I'm calling home, I'm sending kites and mail, like tell them chill, I'm I'ma take that. You get what I'm saying? Like, that was my best friend. Did he just walk away from it? He got no time? Yeah, he walked away. Uh, Scotch free. Wow. Wow. And you were facing 45 years at one point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Did you ever see him after that? Yeah. Okay, what showed happened? Showed up in my video shoot that holds your tongue. The guy that told on you showed up at your video shoot? Yeah. Okay, and what happened? We was on the block. We was on Forest Lane. He walked up. Big Mama's Chicken sit in the corner. And then it's a gas station across the street. I seen him when he was walking. We we in front of the shoe store and we in front of Sharks. It's a little, a little fish and chicken spot right there in the hood. I see him walking from a distance. I'm already seeing him. Like, everybody right here, the cameraman right here, do, and I, I see him coming. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, he know what to say. What's up, bro? Like, what's up? I see you doing your thing, bitch, in the video and shit. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I love that nigga so much, I was cool with him for a little bit. It didn't settle in my head that this nigga told on me. You get what I'm saying? I was used to going to jail all my life, lad. So like, he never been to jail before. I tried to make up every excuse for him. Like, man, he ain't know no better. He ain't never been to jail. He couldn't handle that. He woo the But he was older than me. And, and he always was like, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. So I ain't gonna lie. Like, I ain't just right off the muscle. Just, oh yeah, bitch, we, we buddy, 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 woo, woo, woo. But like, you know, nigga, Strange number, you know, talked about, we talked about the situation a thousand times every time I got mad. Like, fine, like, you know. But then after that, it was just like, all right, I said it in, nigga, you a rat. I can't fuck with you. I mean, did he actually apologize to you and take responsibility for what he did, or did he, was it always an excuse? His, he never apologized. He apologized, let me, he apologized for uh, not writing me and not putting no money on my books. That's what he apologized for. Nah, that's what he apologized for. He was like, bro, I, you know, shit, you know, my bad fool. I ain't, I ain't never been in no situation like this. Woo, 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 woo. We young and shit. I don't know what's going on. So, you know, he apologized for not writing and putting no money on my books. But like, nah, about the whole other shit, like, his brothers, his brothers, they some real street niggas, they some real gangsters. They, they even was like, you read it on him, fam. I'm on your side, though, because you my brother. Blood thicker than water. I ain't no more three side. But you read it on your partner. You get what I'm saying? But I'm still on your side, you know, because you my brother. That's how they, you know, that's how they put it to him. You know, but they, 
They won't let them know, like, you told on that little nigga, fool. Like, so. Yeah, well, you know, I interviewed Freeway Ricky Ross, you know, who was, you know, one of the biggest drug dealers, you know, in America yeah. at one point. Yeah. And uh, he said something very interesting. What would happen if he walked in the room right now? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I have absolutely nothing against him. Really? No. It wasn't his fault. See, the way I look at it is, first of all, I made the mistake of getting in the drug business. That was my first mistake. Mm -hmm. My next mistake was I went back into the drug business as I said I quit. Yeah. So what he did is he only did what people do in the drug business. They tell. They set you up. Hmm. And for somebody to go into the drug business and not understand that, which I was in the drug business and didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. um, but I came to grips with it. No, no, that, that's, that's right. That's 100% right. But this the thing. It's who you get snitched on by. Like, damn. I could expect him to tell on me or her to tell on me or him to tell on me. But like, you tell on me? Like, that's where it be fucked up. They're like, damn. It's like, damn. Yeah, I mean, he got snitched on by his plug. See, that's crazy. His his own plug got on the stand and gave him a life sentence. See, and I mean he managed to beat it by, you know, finding some loopholes. You know, he didn't even he didn't he didn't even know how to read going into prison. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but but he said he has no problems with the guy that told on him. Because he he took responsibility for, you know something? I made the decision to do crimes and, and I there got you no go. problem I got no problem with with with, with the nigga that told on me. Like I'm doing my thing now, bro. Like, er, I'm, not, I'm not even worried about this. I'm glad all this happened. If none of this would happen, I wouldn't be right here. They asked me, do you, you know, going to jail? Yeah, like, all this shit. Like, going to jail, going through the struggle, going through all this. I'm glad all this shit happened. I'm glad all my partners turned into hoes and snake ass. Nigga. I'm glad all that happened, because shit, we here now. They made me this. Like, yeah, that struggle. That, that, that poverty, yeah, that, that, that not having nowhere to stay, that sleeping in their car, that my partners acting like hoes, that my niggas trying to ride me, that niggas telling on me, nigga, I'm doing time. All this shit made, I'm here all summer. <laughs> I mean, when you look at like the Takashi 6 9 situation, yeah. and you look at how he's telling on everybody. <laughs> on everybody. He's telling on everybody. <laughs> Well, you know, I had his baby mama come in and actually read his, his guilty <laughs> plea deal. I know. Did you see that? He said what? I had his baby mama actually read his yeah, guilty I plea. Yeah, I see that, man. <laughs> man it's crazy. I'm, I'm a cold piece of work, man. You is. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, because he, here's my thing. I've always felt like, you know, I, I'm a civilian. I don't want to do no criminal shit. You know, all my, my crip partners, I don't have nothing to do with none of that shit. Nothing. Like, mm. you know. And I've always said, like, you know, if if somebody robs me or or whatever, I'm gonna go to the police. Like yeah. this is, you know, this is what I do, and I'm not gonna That's respected because that's that's who you is. You get what I'm saying? It's who I am. No, I've never been gang that's, affiliated. That's I never wanted to be gang affiliated. Yeah. You know, I've always said if you want to engage in any kind of thing, leave me out of it. Um, but from my point of view, Takashi was having all these gangsters around him do shit over beefs that he was starting himself. And then he turned around and told on everybody. And the fact that the legal system is actually allowing him to walk away while everyone else is doing crimes for shit that he's orchestrating, I think is just fucked up on just the fact that America even works this way. You know what I mean? That's crazy. No, you're right. That's crazy. I, don't, I pray I don't get in none of them situations. I, like, hey, man, we don't. We we trying to take the high road. <laughs> we we ain't worry about none of this shit they got going on. You know what I'm saying? We like shit. Like that's yeah. fucked up. And I think this is just like this is just a poster child of someone who, you know, does a bunch of shit on you know does a bunch of shit on social media, and thinks that it doesn't really apply in the eyes of the law. Yeah, no nah, facts. facts. Do you think in 2019? Someone like a Takashi could tell on everybody, you know, do a year or two, come out and be a hot rapper again? Yeah. Mm. When they let him rap again, he gonna pack out them arenas. He gonna pack out them shows. The day they go get give him a show, he gonna pack it out. It's crazy. 
It's crazy. This 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 world this world and generation is not built off real shit no more. It's like that shit is out the window. I don't I don't had a I done had a nigga I, I used to look up, like, not look up to, but I used to look at, like, real. Tell me some shit, like, bro, fuck all that real shit. You, we got to get with this this other shit. Bro, you trying to be real and shit, man. Fuck all that. That ain't going to get you nowhere. We got to be doing this shit. You just do what they doing. Uh, and he really think like that. So, you know, it's like I, I get on my phone all day and I scroll down my timeline. And it's really like that. You got you got you got fifty thousand comments calling this nigga a rat, but you are gonna have two hundred thousand in the stands when he get on the stage. Yeah. So he right. don't care. So he don't care about being a rat. Cause why this generation is like shit. I'm still gonna be a star. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. I think you're right. I think you're right. And you know you do have people like Boosie who. You know, let my nigga Boots listen. Let Boots, speaking of Boots, let Boosie would have did that. They would have killed his whole career. They would have said he did. See, nah, we ain't fucking with, nah, hell nah. Bro, every, everything that man ever built and said, like from, from bad ass to super bad to all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, everything he ever dropped, they gonna tear it down. But you let Takashi say it. You let Takashi get up there and tell on everybody, and he gonna pack out the arena. That's crazy. Yeah, if they release paperwork on Boosie telling on everybody, uh, that that would just be crazy. Yeah, they, yeah. They, I they, mean, they, but but he built a certain type of fan base, though. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Like like his fan base was kind of people like you. Yeah. Whereas, you know, you you go to a Mo Three show or a Boosie show, it looks very different than a Takashi show. Yeah, it do. I mean, Boosie looked the same. <laughs> Yeah, we we got the same the same fan crab fan base like they they struggle they struggle in that building man they wanna they wanna hear that real shit man like you know what I'm saying like yeah I mean and that's that's the thing about the internet is that now it, it's really up to the fans and what they prefer themselves like you could have hip hop fans who like Mo three and Boosie and have hip hop fans that like uh, Takashi and. Yeah. The two don't have to intermix, yeah. and they don't have to follow the same rules and so forth. And you know, I'm I'm not a fan of what he did, and that's why I've gone out of my way to kind of expose a lot of it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think that the average suburban white kid that listens to him all day long probably don't give a shit. He don't give a damn. He don't give a damn. That that suburban white kid can't wait till they get a show. He finna go out there. He finna rap his heart out. That's what he finna do. Like. And that's crazy, bro. Like they don't understand, though. They don't understand. Yeah, they don't yeah, understand man. what six nine did. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand it. Like I said, I, I'm the one that that actually broke that uh broke that paperwork. You know, because <laughs> the paperwork was sealed. It was actually when he did it, it was sealed. If you read through it, it was purposely sealed because some of the people he told on, they were still trying to apprehend at the time. Yeah. <laughs> so so they didn't want to release it. Yeah. Until they apprehended those people, and after they apprehended those people, then they released the the paperwork, and we got a hold of it, and uh, yeah, we put it out. <laughs> oh man! Uh, yeah, man, it is what it is. Well, listen, man, Mo three, uh, congrats, man. It seems like you've been leveling up, like every year. You know, for the past three, four years, you've been leveling up. The songs keep getting bigger. Uh, you know, the jewelry's getting chunkier. <laughs> you know what I mean? You what? had seven cars before. I don't know if you have, you know, 30 cars now. Nah, but... Yeah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like you're doing well, man. It looks like you're doing well. And it looks like the fan base is growing. And, you know, as a as a hip-hop artist, that's all you can really ask for. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. You know, man. So keep doing your thing. Keep putting Dallas on the map, you mm -hmm. know. And, you hey. know, look forward to... You know, having you come back and do it again. I right, really, man. We here, man. Shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate y'all coming. Hey, man, you you actually called me last year. No, 2017. I was mm. supposed to come. Uh, I was supposed to come to Vlad, but there was so much stuff going on with the other shit. I couldn't even leave nowhere. So, man, perfect timing though. Perfect time. Glad right, you finally you came. Right on time. You know? Yeah, but we we're, were early. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We were early on Mo3, just yeah. so everyone knows, since you put it out there. Yeah, like I was. Yeah, I was. Y'all caught me in 2017. Yeah. No doubt, man. Peace. 100.